Hello guys, it's Gemma Fisher here from Daybreak Dogs in North Somerset, coming to you with today's Friday Fisher Fix. A little bit later than originally planned. Um, I've had one of those mornings where um, I've been sat at my desk doing um, doing emails. Um, it's amazing for for um, for a species that doesn't actually have the ability to write emails. I get an awful lot of emails in my uh, in my dog training career. So um, yes, so that's what I've been busy doing this morning. Um, hope you've been having a productive morning and enjoying some of the lovely sunshine that we've got around the UK at the moment. Um, can hardly believe it's November. It's cold enough for November, um, but uh, but yes, it's uh, beautiful sunshine out there at the moment and uh, some really really nice um, walks going on at the moment. Such a British thing to say, isn't it, to be talking about the weather? Um, so apologies for anybody that's watching from from elsewhere and isn't used to our uh, used to our British uh, uh, British obsession with the weather. Right then. So today, one of the things that um, I was going to talk about was. Um, uh, was a question I got posed during the week and it was about using treats in training and um, it was basically why why doesn't it work when we when we choose to use treats in our dog training and um, it was a really interesting question and one that I feel is really important to answer because I'm a positive reinforcement based trainer all right I like to use rewards in my training but here's the thing I do see some of my clients use treats and in actual fact they are not getting the same results that I am in my um, training and um, it's worth addressing why that is and, and, and how we go about resolving that. So here's the thing. If you are constantly using food as the reason why your dog is with you, then yes, you will have a problem with treat-based training um, because if the dog believes that it is only doing it for what's in it for them, then we do have a bit of a problem. So instead, one of the things that, that we look to do in our training classes is we look to help the dog understand that they perform the behaviour and then they get the reward afterwards. So it's the difference between uh, what we call luring the dog to do something, i.e. here's what's in it for you, please do this for me as opposed to asking the dog to do something and then paying afterwards okay now I do believe that just the same as you or I we go to work to get paid um, I think it's entirely reasonable that our dogs should receive some sort of um, uh, recompense, uh, recompense for for doing the things that we ask them to do but I do think that it needs to happen as a result um, of having done the job and then getting paid afterwards so um, as a for example, so with um, people's recall, this is where, somewhere where things quite often go a little bit awry. So um, you maybe have used these words in the past yourself with your own dogs. Um, tell you what, you can um, give me a little laughing face if you if you recognise yourself in this next bit. Um, so you say the words, what's this, what's this, what's this, to your dog a lot, okay, when you're out and about walking. Now, the thing about this what's this um, thing is that dogs are really really intelligent animals and they know when you are saying what's this and you have something in your pocket and also when you say what's this and you don't have something in your pocket um and my terriers taught me this they were really good at distinguishing between the tone of my voice as to whether or not i had something or i didn't have something so um i have first-hand experience of uh, of smart terriers um but here's the thing, the, the, uh, as well as that, so even if you do have something amazing in your pocket, so you've cut up some prime rump steak or you have some delicious liver cake or cheese or, or sausage, whatever is your dog's drug of choice, when your dog is out and about and it finds something that it wants to do and you say, oh, what's this? They then have a choice. They have the choice to either come back and have what they know that you have or they can carry on with what they were doing. So chasing the squirrel, playing with the other dog, going and saying those people over there that are setting up a picnic. Um, you know, so what we what we want to make sure is that the cue is um, rewarded as opposed to the food or the toy or whatever it is that, as I say, is your dog's drug of choice, that that's the thing that causes the behaviour to happen in the first place. Um, and that's the difference between um, what I suppose I would describe as lure based training as opposed to reinforcement based training. So reinforcement based training is all about the dog um, learns the behaviour, is asked to do the behaviour and then gets paid afterwards. OK, and that's really, really key. Otherwise, you don't get the, the amazing results that I know are possible um, through using um, treats and other things in your training. Um, but on top of that question, it was all about treats this week. Um, I think it was mostly because if you haven't already, you are more than welcome to come and come and join us. Um, you'll uh, followers of the Facebook page will know that I've recently added a um, young male border collie to my um, my family, and his name is Toddy. 
and we have something that we've um, called the Puppy Diaries. It's a Facebook group where people who either have a puppy at the moment are going to be getting a puppy in the future. Um, you're all welcome to come on over and join me there um, where basically I'm taking little videos of um, things as they're happening. So some of the highlights of this week included um, we met some livestock, we went and met some horses and ponies. Um, we've been into um, a couple of vet surgeries this week so he's had some experiences in a veterinary um, situation um, and basically it's just little videos of, of us doing things um, but one of the videos that I posted this week was I got started I've got him started on his bed training okay so that is um, my ability to be able to go and ask him to get onto his bed when when I um, need him to, to go and settle down somewhere and somebody well there were two questions on that one was, how do I keep my dogs looking so slim? Because if you've um, met any of my dogs in, in person, um, they are beautifully slim. In fact, that makes me quite jealous because they're slimmer than I am, most of them. Um, they're not skinny, but they are just, you know, they are um, they are well muscled and they, um, they have a nice waistline. And... Uh, if you watch me training, you'll see they get an awful lot of training treats in, in their um, in their training sessions um, for various different things. And obviously, as they get older, they don't maybe get quite so many as, as you'll see in the puppy diaries with, with Toddy at the moment. Um, but yeah, they do get, you know, they get some, some, um, some reinforcement as they go. So um, one of the, the first things is that with Toddy, if he's going through a training session and he's getting a lot of treats in a training session, do you know what? He's got a really small tank, so he can only take on board so much. So what happens is we basically just skip a meal. If he's had a lot of chicken in a training session, then, then he'll skip a meal. Um, with my older dogs... Um, Truthfully, I have never had a problem with an overweight dog as a result of the number of training treats that I give them. And I am very, very generous. Anybody that's trained with me will know. I am, you know, we, we want to pay heavily for the things that we want. Um, so if you are finding that your dog is putting on weight, my suggestion would be that it's possibly something to do with um, the uh, the diet that the dog is on. And it might be worth experimenting with what you're feeding them and the quantities that you're feeding them. Um, just, do you know what? Dogs just like people. Um, some of us, we only have to look at a piece of chocolate cake and, and we, we, we um, get the calories from it. Whereas um, I know uh, those of you that know my, um, my friend and instructor, uh, Nicola, you know what? She's naturally very, very slim and she doesn't, um, you know, she can eat that, that piece of cake and look at that piece of cake and doesn't have that same, same issue that perhaps I do. Um, or maybe I'm just greedy. I don't know. Um, but, um, but so dogs are exactly the same as well. So even within my household, there are a couple of the dogs that are more inclined to put on weight than others. Um, but as I say, we just it's it's about monitoring the, the main meal. I don't think it's to do with the number of training treats that you're giving them. Um, plus the fact um, just during the week, I have been using, um, uh, so mostly the dogs are raw fed, but we are actually trialing a new food um, called Bob and Lush brilliant name Bob and Lush and um, and in actual fact the dogs are very happy to work for that kibble as well so um, so in actual fact they can get some of their their um, uh, their training treats through using that kibble as well so if your dog is dry food fed there's no reason why in and amongst the sausage and chicken and cheese and etc etc that you um, you cut up for them for training sessions that you pop some of the kibble in there too um, the thing with that is that dogs are very, very much scent driven. So if the kibble is in and amongst cheese and chicken and other, you know, nice bits, then what's going to happen is that it all starts to smell the same. So you're likely to get um, a dog that's happy to work for their kibble as, uh, in amongst all of these other bits and pieces. Not always. Some dogs are very, very smart and they will go chicken, 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 kibble, oh, you know, and out it goes. So it kind of it kind of depends on your dog a little bit. Um so yes, yeah, so if you are having a problem with an overweight dog, I wouldn't necessarily look at um, reducing the number of training treats that you're using. I'd probably look towards um, the diet that my dog is on. And um, if you are interested in hearing any more about um, some of the, the information that we have about that, um, then, then please do get in touch and we can send you some links of different places where you can get some, some good information about that. Okay, so that was about overweight dogs. So we've covered um, how uh, using treats is uh, how to make it most effective. Um, and we've just talked about um, avoiding dogs becoming overweight through the number of treats that we're using in our training. So the third thing that um, I got asked about was what training treats am I using? Um, and that was specifically about a video that somebody had watched uh, when I was training Toddy. Um, but I thought I would address it for all ages and, and, and um, stages of dogs as well. So with Todd, um, he hasn't actually yet had his first vaccination. He will probably be having that in the next week or two, something like that. Um, 
but with puppies I tend to be a little bit more conservative about the training treats that I give them because when they're going through the process of vaccination um, it's very similar I, I don't know if you've ever had something like the flu vaccine or, or something similar that we can actually feel a little bit under the weather a day or two after having the the vaccination and obviously our puppies um, get quite a lot in their vaccinations to protect them against um, some of the awful diseases that they can get so um, so bear in mind that in actual fact, some of the things that you maybe feed your puppy at this age maybe need to be a little bit more mild um, and you maybe need to keep a little bit more of an eye on what's coming in, uh, what's going in and what's coming out um, than you maybe do when your puppy becomes an adult dog. Um, so the sorts of things that I'm using to give you an idea with uh, with Toddy, um, I'm using things like chicken, I'm using things like um, the sliced wafer thin ham that you might use in sandwiches, that sort of thing. Um, also looking to use um, things like we've tried out some cheese this week and some different meats um, but as I say I'm just monitoring it closely and I would just suggest to you that you just use your common sense and you don't try out a hundred different things in in one training session because obviously if they get an upset tummy after that you kind of don't have an idea of what's causing the um, the issue However, with my adult dogs, I'm prepared to um, pretty much anything goes. If if my my dog tells me that they like it, then then they're allowed a little bit of it. So um, I actually have some really really good recipes on the Daybreak blog, um, simply because. You can buy training treats, obviously, from places like Pets at Home and your local pet shop and that sort of thing. Um, but, but the thing is, you, you will spend an awful lot of money on like quite a small packet of food. And what we then find is that you come to our training class and actually they may have really enjoyed those treats at home. But in, in, a, in a different environment, in a more stimulating environment, like being out and about either in a training class or out for a walk. You know what? They just don't cut it. The, the dogs aren't interested. So... Um, the thing about these um, these recipes that I've got on the uh, on the blog are um, a they are probably um, I would say that they're all cheaper actually to make up your own training treats rather than use something from the um, from the shops. Certainly anything that you buy from the shops, um, we particularly um, have I got some of them here. I do actually. Bear with, I will just find. So we have oh, these ones that we love from Nature's Menu. So I don't know if you can see those ones there. These ones we really, really love um, and the dogs really, really enjoy um, these ones and these work really, really well. The thing about these is it's quite a small packet and to give you an idea, in a training session with um, Vodka, who is now 22 months old, so she's still in quite you know, um, heavy training, that we will probably get through about two or three of these packets um, because they're only about 60 grams each so that there's not a lot in there. So... Um, the reason particularly I make up my own treats is, um, A, I, like I quite enjoy the switch off from, from baking um, and making me feel like I'm a good mummy because I'm, I'm making up my own dog treats. Um, but also it's just the cost. Um, to make our liver cake, for example, to give you a, a, an idea, it maybe costs a, a pound for the amount of liver that I want to make up for a really big batch of liver cake. Um, we stick some plain flour in there, um, an egg and some um, maybe a garlic clove. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, do you know what? I've got like, then a whole batch that I have in the um, in the freezer ready to go when I have um, a training tr session coming up. So in terms of cost, what you will find is that not only making your own is um, is more effective in your dog training, but it's also going to save you a bunch of money too. So I highly recommend that you go and check those out there. Um, Okay, so for those of you that are not wanting to try out for um, the Great British Bake Off, which actually sadly is no longer. Um, then uh, there are also some really good companies that we recommend and what I will do is I will pop some links in the in the comments um, but just to give you an idea Classy Canine Bakery is one they sell the most magical liver cake in the whole world dogs love it in fact I don't think I've yet met a dog that doesn't like their liver cake so liver cake is a really good one um, they also sell a uh, tuna, cake, tuna cake version of their of their liver cake recipe um, which if your dog is inclined to enjoy fish then that's a really good one for them as well um, and there's also another company called um, the Dogchester Portissiere um, and they sell amazing amazing dog treats too um, with the sort of exotic combinations like crab and smoked salmon and all the rest of it and things that you, your dog will basically be eating better than you um, but um, but yes they will be working really really well for you so um, 
Yeah, that's right, Lorna. Love making liver cake. Although the smell is not appreciated by everyone. Yeah, that, that is true. Um, so that can be one of the things about your, your baking. that You want to make sure that um, you're actually doing it at a time where um, you're not going out in your best clothes because you don't want to go out smelling of liver cake. Um, well, maybe you do if you're going out dog walking or you're going out dog training like me, but possibly not if you're you're going somewhere for a family event or something like that. So... Um, yeah, do pop in the comments actually. If, for those of you that are online now, which recipes that you particularly like off the uh, off the website? So I know um, I was having a conversation with one of my clients in the week. Um, uh, lovely uh, miniature snacks are called Indy. Um, I don't know whether or not I can't see if uh, if you're on here or not. Where are we? There we go. Um, but. Uh, uh, he was making up a really big batch of the um, blueberry and coconut um, recipe that we like. So um, that one is a really big hit. So if you're not so fond, for example, if you're a vegetarian or something like that and you're not keen on handling um, organ meat like liver, then in actual fact that can be a really um, a really useful thing as well. Um, right, yeah, Nick, I prefer liver to pilchard. Yeah, the pilchard one is strong smelling. Really, mm, yes, I, I, I can see why you would say that. Uh, Lorna, Jodie thought I was making chocolate cake. Oh, poor baby girl. Yes, um, it does look absolutely delicious when you make it, doesn't it? Like, and especially if you if you lay it out in a tray, because I, I use um, little silver foil trays that I buy from Asda, um, which if you're looking for something to that's easy to clean up, what I normally find is um, that I can use them for a few times and then once they start to get really... Um, um, messed up and things they can just be popped in the bin so it, it's um, it's a way to keeping uh, the kitchen a bit cleaner um, for all of the recipes I think you will find that the using a food processor is the best way to do it um, I have tried cutting up liver before now with just a knife and trying it without but honestly it doesn't it doesn't work terribly well um, Lorna, slow roasted lamb heart treats. Go wound up with Sky too. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the other way that you can do things. If you're not keen on actually doing the baking, you can actually buy things like the liver and just cook it at a low heat for a long time in the oven. And um, and that will that will work as a really great uh, training treat as well. So, um, so that's another thing to use. Um, but I mean, honestly, guys, pop in the comments any things that maybe you found that work really well for your dogs. Um, I am constantly just adding to the blog because I find a nice recipe that I've tried out with the dogs and I know that they love it. I add it to the blog so that people can try out different things um, because... Uh, you know, variety is the spice of life. Um, and in actual fact, I think our dogs appreciate something a bit different. I think that's more likely to get them interested in working. Um, for those of you that have attended training classes, don't you always find that your dog wants the treats of the person next to you as opposed to the treats you've brought with them? So, um, so even if they're the most amazing liver cake or pilchard cake or whatever it might be, then yeah, that's still, that still tends to be the case, which is funny. Right then. So, um, so we've covered, um, how effective um, training treats are in in uh, in our training, and as I say, you get a big yes vote from me. I use an awful lot of treats in my training. If you were to see me out and about, I don't have to have pockets and pockets and pockets full of treats to get my dogs to do as they're asked. Um, but um, I definitely reward heavily when when they're they're doing the right thing. Uh, second of, we talked about overweight dogs. So if you are struggling with that, um, do get in touch and we can send you some more um, information about just uh, not because I don't want to advise you on what to feed your dog, because I think each dog is an individual and I'm not a dietitian, so I'm not qualified to, to um, advise you on that. But what I can do is I can definitely send you out information and links to um, to things where you can do some research and find out what might work best um, best for your dog. Um, and then secondly, what sort of training treats to use? Um, always a fun conversation to find out what what uh, what things that uh, the dogs like to eat. Um, just as a funny example, um, I know that Ella, my black and white border collie, she loves um, uh, prawns. Uh, she loves all things fish, but she particularly like prawns. So um, once I got some raw prawns, which I thought, wow, we're going to you know use these for a really delicious um, session, and she loved them. She thought they were amazing. Um, I tried to give them to her niece, um, my red and white border collie, Jade. She looked like I was trying to cut her throat or something. She was like, I can't believe that you are making me try and eat these things. I wasn't trying to poison her, I promise. Um, but she doesn't like fish and she doesn't like prawns. So you know what? You have to find the thing that works for you and for your dog. Um, 
and um, and uh, I will cover perhaps in a future Friday Fisher Fix about how we make the switch from we're using training treats in our training to starting to up the the um, arousal level and start thinking about using toys as a reward as well um, because obviously that would be that for me in my dog's training is the next stage so we teach with food and then we look to um, to build up their understanding um, and the, the level of difficulty by upping their excitement levels with using their toys too. We go, Andrea, when I have a roast chicken, I use all the bits I'm not going to eat to make treats, replacing the liver with the chicken in the liver cake recipe. Perfect. Thank you, um, Andrea. That's a really good um, tip to, to do. Um, because, yes, sometimes it is like you have all of this leftover stuff, but it's what to do with it. And that's a really great way of um, um, of building that into your um, your dog training. Perfect. Right then. OK, um, so I think I've covered um, all of the bits I wanted to cover in terms of treats and training today. Um, as I mentioned, as we went through about the puppy diaries, if you haven't already joined us, please come on over and join us there. Um, I know I'm slightly biased, but Toddy is delicious. I mean, any of you that have met Todd um, or seen one of his photographs, you know, just press on the heart button. Um, he is just amazing. Um, I'd like to think it's because I'm a super dog trainer, but um, I think it's more that uh, that the dog gods thought that you know what I deserved a um, a really happy smiley chappy um, to uh, to help me through the grief of my boy Kai, and uh, and just the last two girls have been a bit challenging. So um, so my boy uh, my boy Toddy is uh, is just an absolute delight, and uh, thank you Denise Wright, his breeder, for letting me have him. Um, he was uh, he was basically he was the last one in the litter. I don't know if I've told anybody this he was the last one in the litter and it was basically because Denise a bit like myself she believes in the process of you sit down with all the puppies and the puppies then they choose you you don't choose the puppies they they choose you and uh here's the thing Toddy kept choosing um Denise the breeder he kept saying nope not interested in this person not interested in this person um Anyway, I'm really, really pleased to say that when I went up to meet him in um, in West Yorkshire, where we travelled up to get him, um, do you know what? It wasn't long before he was sat in my lap. And I still wasn't sure because um, I don't know for those of you that have lost a dog, um, it's it's an awful process because they become so much part of your life. Um, and I have to say, I was not sure. I was not sure if this was the right time, etc., etc. Um, but uh, but yeah, he, he climbed into my lap, and well, I'm his mummy. That's how it works. That's that's um, that's what we're doing. So um, so yeah, by all means, come and join us in the Puppy Diaries. It'd be lovely to have you there. And um, if you have any questions, puppy related, that's a really good place to get some good answers for it as well. Um, in the meantime, if you are not already signed up for the daybreak um, newsletter it's just a really good way for us to keep in touch I can let you know about future Friday Fisher fixes and also get um, questions from you as well. So I can send out um, send out emails to uh, to find out what things you're struggling with, particularly in a week, and then I can uh, look to help you resolve them. So um, if you go to the main Facebook page, there's a button, a sign up button. Just click on that, add your details, and then we'll be able to keep in touch that way too. Anyway, I think that's me done for today. So I um, hope you're, you've got a nice weekend planned. I'm going off uh, sheepdog training. I've got agility teaching in the morning and then I've got sheepdog training tomorrow afternoon. Um, might see if I can... Um, I don't know quite if I, there'll be enough uh, uh, signal for me to be able to do a video there. But if there is, I will try and get a video of that for you. Um, but have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing. Enjoy your dogs. And I look forward to seeing you next Friday for the next Friday Fish Fix. See you then. Bye-bye.